Greetings, everybody. My name is Whipray. Uh, we're here today not necessarily to play games. I've had a couple requests on how to set up an Empyrean Galactic Survival dedicated server. And so I figured uh, to try and do that and knock that out with uh, my new setup I have here. I'm doing some division recordings and I've uh, been working on my audio, but I figured this is a good stop to kind of get us back on track with Empyrean. Because um, I can finally access my editing software now. Yay! So um, I had a bunch of people ask how to set up a dedicated server. And uh, it's actually not too bad. Uh, you may have to tweak some firewall settings, and you may have to tweak some of your uh, router settings, which will vary from router to router. I can't necessarily help too terribly much with that, but I can do what I can with at least getting the uh, the Steam side of things kind of configured and tweaked for you. So uh, I guess first things first is you need to navigate to where Imperial Galactic Survival is installed. Um, for me, I have it on my new fancy raid array. <laughs> and Steam Games, Steam Apps common, big list of games, so Imperium. So for those watching still, it's going to be where you installed your Steam games, Steam apps, common, Imperium is where it'll be installed. And also as a quick uh, side note, I am pulling my information on how to set this thing up from the Imperium Galactic Survival uh, wiki. I will have a description of it in the, not the description, I'll have a link to it in the description. Ha! -ha. Um, and that's what I pretty much use to get the whole thing set up and running. So uh, if you're using that in this video, you should be in pretty good shape on how to set up your own dedicated server, at least locally or on a spare machine. I wouldn't recommend it normally play on the same machine you're using as a dedicated host because it takes a lot of memory. But if you've got a really beefy machine, you can definitely do it. I know I've done it. So in either case, um, in here you have uh, the Imperian Galactic Survival install folder, for lack of a better word. Um, in here, you'll normally find a dedicated that YAML file, and you will also find an Empyrean dedicated executable, and you'll also find a uh, where was the other thing? These little Windows command scripts, the Empyrean dedicated. Uh, by default, there's just those those ones there. I purposely made backups of the originals so that if I utterly fuck something up, um, I can go back to something that I know works. Um, what I also would recommend doing that I haven't done myself personally is once you have a working version of your configuration file and your batch file done for your server, make a backup of those as well. Because if something happens to yours, you can always revert to a working copy. Um, because this is a pre-alpha shortly going into an alpha, there's going to be lots of builds and patch changes and stuff like that. And there's a very good chance that when that happens, it'll overwrite all the old dedicated server stuff. So I highly recommend uh, keeping that in a some in named some differently named in some sort of different way, so that when it replaces the old one, the uh, backup one isn't messed with. Um, so kind of starting with that one, uh, we go first over to the guide says how to start it, and it just says navigate to here, and then you know click on this guy right here with a very rudimentary UI. So we're gonna do that real quick, and I'll kind of show what the UI looks like. See, dedicated server needs to be start with one of the period, one of the batch files. So that's why we try to just run the basic thing. So we're gonna quit here. So the batch files are here. Um, I have the backup and I have the basic one. So we're gonna run this guy here. It's gonna this little important notice log here, and it's gonna actually ask me about my firewall settings. This will be important later because this is what screwed me up before when I first set the thing up. So we're gonna allow this through the firewall. Very important. There we go. Alright, so over here it says important notice. Do not use this batch file, e.e. graphics version, if you connect via a remote desktop connection to a dedicated server. Specifically, if you're essentially buying, renting, or what have you, your server from someone not you, don't use this mode. Um, usually a lot of times they'll just give you kind of a server and go, here's your server, configure what you need to do. Uh, you'll have to run the version that doesn't use the GUI because uh, you have to telnet in and configure everything through telnet. I'm not going to go into that because I am not very strong with Telnet, and I'm not in a situation where I'm actually needing to use Telnet. I always have access to my files because I'm running on my local machine. If you're a home user who happens to have a spare, beefy machine or something like that on the network, you can just kind of run on that. You can still access your files, and you won't have to worry about Telnet again. Um, I, that won't be covered in this video, unfortunately. I'm terribly sorry. Um, in either case, uh, don't do it because it can lead to a horrible uh, log spamming, which can cause lag. Press any key to continue. So I press space bar, and it goes away. So this is pretty much the entire UI for the decade server. Whether or not it's actually set up or not, it's 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 running right now, and this is what you see. You got two revert reserve slots for playfields, which are like you know outer space, Akua, Omicron, the moon, what have you. Those are considered playfields. It normally has two of those in reserve by default, and then as players are occupying them, it'll be down here and it'll keep them unloaded ones in reserve to kind of meet demand. 
you have a lot of players on your server, you want to obviously have a few more of those than just two. But two, for what I've experienced, works pretty well, and it'll also tell you what players are currently logged in. But at the moment, you know, if you haven't done any configuration, cool, you have a server running, and it's not doing jack. So let's actually get into the configuration side of things. So we're going to save and exit for the time being there. So what we're going to do then is, that was the batch file. So we're going to right-click, and we're going to edit this. Um, I u You can use Notepad if you're running Windows. I personally use Notepad++. It is a freeware um, text editor. And it's really good for when you do coding and stuff like that because it changes the color of the text depending on how it's uh, reacting in the compiler. That's why I like to use it. So we're going to edit this uh, batch file that we just tried to open where it you know, popped all the other stuff up with Notepad++ and actually see the guts and inner workings of it. So in here, we have uh, echo off. So it's turning off the talk back. I don't know. Um, if there is not a log file, uh, the, the, we're going to just kind of walk through the code. If there's not a log file, make a log file, is what that second line says. And then third line says for, I think that's that function, um, in get local data time, find the time, and then it sets whatever the local time is to that variable. And then it does some more stuff with that variable there. It kind of sets a server time. Because the server does have to check for how long people have been idle, how long people haven't been logged in. So that's kind of setting those variables as to seeing, okay, when was this? When was Bob last online? Has he been long for a certain amount of time? If not, then you know, get rid of his shit. If you have your server set up that way, and we'll get into that in the next, uh, the next text file that we edit. This is just the thing that launches the server. Um, so that's that fourth line. Fifth line is start imperian.dedicated.exe. Um, force D3D9, I believe that's the rendering engine they're using. Uh, this is the location of the log file. And then normally this isn't here. You actually have to add this in yourself after the fact, but it's explained in the next uh, text thing that we edit. Um, this is the configuration file for the server. And in the configuration file itself, it says place this bit of blurb of text that we're showing right here. Uh, put this in the launching batch script so that it knows what configuration file to pull up. Um, and then we're going to go over to echo, which means that little text box that popped up, that's what's causing this to pop up now. Important notice, and then it goes on to say what we read earlier in that command text file. This is telling it to echo out to the screen, echo out all this crap, and then pause waiting for an input from the user. So the only thing you'll usually have to do here is add in um, this little bit of text here saying uh, dedicated version, uh, what your dedicated server is, and then or what your dedicated server configuration file is at is going to be called because they're all going to be in the same directory. In my case, I call it, normally I think it's called uh, dedicated.yaml. Um, I call it my dedicated config so that A, it doesn't get overwritten if uh, Steam reinstalls a new version of it or something like that and overwrites it. It's not going to set mine because mine's a different name. So I did it like that. Um, and that's all that is for right there. Uh, next up, uh, so that's how you launch it and point to where the configuration file is. So now we're going to go over to the dedicated the the configuration file. Now, as you notice in here, I've got my dedicated config.yaml, which is the one I made. The default one is dedicated a yaml. Um, this one is, I believe, yeah, this is what it looks like by default. Um, everything's like at least on my end because I'm using Notepad plus plus is green. Uh, that means it's commented out and the it's just being ignored for when the script actually runs through and looks at stuff. Um, in here, it'll mention on the second line, because it's dedicated service settings, and again, that, that pound symbol denotes that this is a comment, and it's not actually read when the, when the program is going through the configuration file. Uh, so it says, to use your own dedicated YAML, IG, what I just called mine, add this bit over here in between the quotes um, to the corresponding batch file. And that's why I did mine, as I just tacked it right at the end there where they had all the things pointing to what, where the log file should be. Um, and we'll kind of re-reference that because I think it's, yeah, I have it over here. So what I did is I just kind of tacked on this right here to the end of line 5 um, because it says, you know, start everything right here and it's got the dash things that added extra operating parameters onto when it's starting and I'm telling it to use this configuration file. Um, next up, uh, blank line, then we go over to what server port. You want to leave that blank because that is what the default client always uses for port numbers. If you want to use your own port number and be a little bit weirder for it, that's cool. You just have to make sure that anyone who's trying to connect into you makes sure they change their port. Otherwise, it's like trying to uh, put like a square peg in a round hole. They're going to be using the wrong port to try and talk to your server. Like they're knocking on the door over here, and you're actually over here trying to listen on this door, and they're just not coming to your door, for lack of a term. Uh, personally, just leave it at default 30,000, and everything's okay. 
Uh, the next thing is the server name value. Uh, it's going to be what's displayed in the uh, in the uh, log file when you're trying to connect into the server. Uh, by default, it's called my server. I called mine Whipray server because you know, hey, it's Whipray. Yeah. Um, next up is the first commented out section. Um, if you want to have a password on your server, you need to get rid of this little pound symbol. And if you're using Notepad++, it'll actually change the color of the text to denote that it's no longer being commented out. Um, but we're going to put that comment back on because we're just leaving this how it is. Um, it's asking you what the value of the server password is going to be. The default is capital ABC. If you do use a server password, please to God, change it. Like, I'm not going to get into a whole bit thing of the internet security, but never use default passwords. They're terrible. Use, like, at least numbers and letters and stuff like that to make it, like, semi so people can't get into it. Please. Pretty please. Okay. In either case, uh, this is where you would set your server password. Um... In both the, this right here, the server password, and for the uh, server name, I did not try any type of weird special characters. I tried to keep it to just alphanumeric stuff to make sure that it wouldn't get funked up when I start messing with things trying to read it. So if you try to do special characters, let me know in the comments. Let me know how it works, and I may or may not add annotations to this to let people know if it does. Um, but I usually just call it on Whipray server. No funny apostrophes or anything like that. Or is it apostrophes? Yeah, apostrophes, not commas. Commas go on the bottom. Ah. Um, but yeah, that's the password for the server there. Uh, you can then set how many uh, players are maxed on, uh, can be allowed on the server. Uh, default is five. Um, I set mine for six because my machine's beefy enough where I feel I can handle that. If you're running some like a uh, rented server, you may be able to do more. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. I, I host mine locally. I don't pay for mine to be hosted somewhere else. Um, and again, I cannot stress enough. Make sure, if you're doing this, get rid of these pound symbols, because if this has got a pound in front of it, and it's like green text or something like that, it's not going to read that limitation. It's just going to skip right over it. You need to make sure, if you're using Notepad++, that it's in that dark blue, and that the uh, the uh, hat, the pound symbol isn't there. The pound symbol is telling the program to ignore that line. So make sure that, that, make sure that you do not have those if you would like to use those settings. Uh, next thing is going to be the server description. Um, server info can contain bold text, uh, underlined text, so on and so forth, and it gives you some examples of how to do uh, formatting. It looks like HTML-ish, so if you're familiar with that, it might be able to help. Um, max number of characters is 127, and do note that it does have that little bit right there commented out so that the compile does not look past that and kind of error out. Um, next line uh, tells you how many reserved play fields. Um, determines the number of play fields that servers are held in reserve. For busy public server workers, we would like recommend at least two. The default is one. Um, essentially what it does is it preloads an area for people to load into so they don't have to wait for the server to actually kind of channel through and, uh, I guess, load everything into memory. If you already have two in a reserve and you have a third guy, you've got, you've got Bob and Steve in their own little environments, and they both decide to go over to another planet. It'll pretty much, instead of the server having to stop and really wait and load, it already has the two preloaded. So it just goes, here you go, guys. You just go right into these guys. And it just lets them go very flawlessly into the next systems so without how long wait. Um, I personally, when it was just me and Tornath playing on our previous videos, um, I just used a dedicated two. Um, they recommend one because typically you're not doing a whole lot of jumping around back and forth between planets and zones and such like that unless you're going to the moon and back. I personally feel two would be fine on a small server. One's fine on a small server if you're working together. If you have between three and four people, you maybe want two. I don't know if you would need any more than that. I don't think my machine can handle much more than like six or seven people, but uh, you can play around with it and see what it goes. Uh, two was working fine with me and Tornath without any problems. We were able to go to two different systems and didn't have any headaches. Um, next up is for when you're actually hosting, when you're having someone else host your server. These are Telnet settings. Um, I'm really not going to go into these because I barely know how to do Telnet for my job because there are so few things that do it at where I work. But uh, essentially, Telnet is for when you're not running the server uh, physically where you're at. It lets you go into a server port and then start playing with like the configuration settings. Uh, in this case, it's like, are you enabling it? Uh, if you are enabling it, what port are you connecting to? Because you essentially type in the IP address for the server in the Telnet, tell it what port and it would ask for a password, and then it would let you in and mess with the configuration files and stuff like that. Um, but that's what these three values are here for. And remember, if you want to actually use this stuff, make sure you turn off the comment by deleting that pound symbol at the start of the line. <clears throat> uh, next up, we have uh, some more variable things. So the game name, the value is the game name. This is for, uh, I believe this is for where, uh, let me check my 
And again, the uh, wiki that I'm pulling from on another monitor here, it does also break all of these down and describes what each of these things do. And so actually for game name is, yes, is the name of the save game that the thing creates. You can actually pull the save game up in single player if you so choose, but uh, game name will be what the uh, name of the save file will be. So if you want to go back or make a backup of it yourself manually, there's that. Um, mode is what game mode you're in. One is for survival, two is for creative. Um, currently, by default, it sets to one. Uh, the seed is what seed your uh, world galaxy is. Theoretically, if I was Galaxy Seed 001, and one of my wonderful viewers decided to do Galaxy Seed 001, we would have the exact same geom geography and stuff like that in all the planets, because it uses the exact same random number of variables and shit like that when they're on the same seeds. It's good if you're trying to uh, keep consistency between your worlds and stuff like that, or if you feel like just being a random asshole and just going, Meh, you can set up to a random seed and see what happens. Um, but it's just how it, it determines how the world's procedurally generated. Unless you're a real stickler for it, either put a random number in or just leave it at default. Uh, decay time is 24. The time of in-game hours when a player-built structure without a core and or less than 10 blocks gets removed. And it goes on to say 24 hours in is equal to 24 hours of in-game time is equal to an hour of real time. Uh, so it says after a full in-game day-night cycle, if a player has put down some building structure stuff but it doesn't have a core, it's removed or if it's under 10 blocks. Um, next thing is wipe time. Um, wipe time, it says, is the number of time in-game hours when player-built structures that have not been visited by a player get removed entirely, gone, kaput. Uh, 4,000 hours in game time equals a, real t a week of real time. Zero is disabled. Uh, for my small servers, because there's not many of us, and because I know we would get livid if we blew each other shit, if the sh server just blew shit over our shit up. Uh, uh, I leave it at zero just to disable it entirely because it's it's not worth the headache of just going where did my stuff go bah fuck um, max structures uh, set this if you want to limit a max number of structures per play field due to the performance currently max number of structure must not exceed 100 default to 64 um, it's all really what your server can handle um, I think I left mine at the default uh, I don't feel like pulling it up because it's got all my server password information as much as I love you guys I don't want you blowing my shit up Thanks. <laughs> um, if you see it up, you can certainly try the password. I'm not going to try and block any. If you can guess the password, you can get in, no problems. Um, but yeah, max number of structures is how many structures per play field. So how many structures you can have per planet, per outer space, so on and so forth. And then the anti-grief distance uh, for PVE whoa, for PVE play fields, distance and number of meters around a faction's base where no other faction's base can be built. So essentially, you can't build someone's base here and then go have another base right on top of it. You actually have to have a certain number of meters between the two of them. Um, and that's pretty much all of the, uh, for lack of a better word, the la the settings on the uh, back end that you have to configure. Um, probably going to regret doing this, but we're going to pull up my server on this other tab here. This is my server. Um, Whiprace server. Yes, you see the password's beefy. Please don't abuse it. It's not up all the time, so if you see it up, feel free to visit maybe. I may change the password, I may not. Who knows? It may be a surprise. Woo! Um, but yeah, I left the default, the port name be default. Uh, Whip race server, password, and max number of players. My little description blurb. Uh, you know, check out my channel. Self advertising. Um, number of play fields to keep reserve is two. Um, I don't use Telnet since I locally host my own machine, so I just left that commented out. Um, I named my thing dedicated config, and as you can see, my plans are playing Steam and stuff. Um, called my gave save file uh, dedicated server so I know which save file is actually the dedicated one so I can back it up if I need to or if something happens, you know, I can go in there by myself and fix it. Um, game vote is on survival. That's my world seed if anyone wants to kind of see what me and Torneth are having to deal with. Uh, 48 hours of in-game time. So two hours if there's a structure that's a player owned and there's no core or it's less than 10 blocks, it's pulled. Um, I have wipe time for just completely pulls things all together. I got that disabled. And I left the max structures and the anti-grief differences at default. So, uh, that all said, uh, we don't really have to worry about this anymore because we've got everything configured. Uh, so you've done your thing. And, uh, again, my dedicated YAML, I use something different so it's not, you know, I think by default it's called dedicated, yeah, it's by default called this. Um, and no, we are not going to save that because we're going to leave that like that is, so we can make sure we have a working backup or working template to work off of. 
and then you just add this little bit of dash command to the end of your Imperium dedicated thing, as seen here. And that's the basic backend stuff. So we're going to close those. And then what I also did too is I made a backup of the batch file just in case I fuck mine up somehow. Actually, do we edit this with new plus plus? Yeah, this is the backup of how I have it set up because I know it works. So I made a backup of it so that if there's ever an event where when I patch it, it gets rid of this one, I can just uh, restore this backup. I can just rename this backup to Imperium Dedicated and it'll have all my old server settings back. Um, I believe I did the same thing with... I didn't have to do the same thing over here because my dedicated config.yaml is a different name than dedicated yaml, which is the default dedicated server settings file. So this one should not be uh, overwritten if I get a patch. Because again, we're in pre-alpha slash uh, alpha, depending on when you're watching this video. And when we get patches, there's a chance that this stuff will get overwritten by patch stuff. And there's also a chance it won't work when it gets patched. So in either case, uh, what we're going to do is and we're going to... Uh, and Backing up a second here, an important thing to note, because this just screwed me up for like a good 30 minutes the first time I did it. Make sure, because when we were going through here, it popped up a little Windows firewall thing. Or I don't know if it was in this one or the first take that screwed up. Um, make sure you allow Imperian dedicated through your Windows firewall. Um, I'm not going to pull that up because that is a big safety hazard for me if everyone sees all my firewall stuff. But Windows should give you a little pop-up saying, hey do you want to allow this program to run in Windows? You want to click yes. If you do not click yes, Windows is going to block it before it can actually go out into the wild world of the internet so people can connect in. So uh, I believe to get the back, I, I think I did it in this video. I can't remember because I, 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 hit, I hit my recording button as like a zoom in thing for the window and it screwed everything up. But uh, I believe you can get the prompt to come up if it hasn't come up before by just running the uh, batch script. Because it'll do this number, and then it should launch this up. And before it launches this up, Windows will say, hey, do you want to let this program through the firewall? You do want to let this program through the firewall, otherwise you won't be able to see it. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to fire up Steam, and we're going to fire up Empyrean. Um, and we're just going to verify that I can actually find my own damn server. Um, another thing that you may have to do, and this is going to be a bit more technical, if it's not being allowed, if it's if you've allowed it through your Windows firewall and you've done all these steps with configuring it on the back end for like the configuration files and stuff like that, and it's still not showing up, what you may have to actually do is go into your router from your uh, cable provider, log into your router, and there will be a thing called port forwarding. You're going to have to forward your ports to allow this program to poke out of it so that it can um, talk to the rest of the internet. By default, you should not have to do that. Um, but if you do, there are lots of guides on how to do that, and unfortunately, it will the way to do it will vary from router to router, and I'm not necessarily sure me showing you how to do it on my router is going to be able to help you out. Um, if there are issues with that, I can probably record a video on how to do that as well, but tentatively speaking, we're just trying to keep it as self-contained as we can without branching out into all the possibilities, because that would turn this 20-minute video into an easy hour video. So we're going to go over to multiplayer. And there's my server, right there. So, we're going to connect, and we're going to put our password in. Shh, it's a secret to everybody. <clears throat> and because I've been on my server before, it should remember me, and I should pop up where I was before. Yep, here I am now on my ship. So, and that's how you set up your own dedicated server. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Feel free to like uh, like, subscribe, or leave a comment below. And uh, until next time, I'll catch all of you later. See ya.